morning. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for that kind introduction. It is a pleasure to speak before you today. As Daniel mentioned, I'm the Director of Excise Tax Policy here at the Tax Foundation, so my remarks are going to focus on excise tax policy. Our team was also kind enough to print out the paper and put it on all of the seats up front here. One of my main goals today is to have you leave, or, or at least whenever I finish my talk here, think that excise taxes are interesting. I find them fascinating. Uh, I recognize that it is a select group of people who really like to study and read about taxes. And yet within that group, it's an even narrower set of people who like to study excise taxes. I find them fascinating. I'm gonna tell you some of the reasons why. And if you think that they are interesting or if you wanna learn more, you have the paper to take with you. Now I will provide some summary comments of the things that we find in the paper. Uh, obviously, the paper will have more details, lengthier discussions, uh, and of course, all of our data are available online for you to review, share with colleagues, and further this research even more. Now, again, I find excise taxes fascinating. They're one of the, perhaps the oldest form of taxation, but over time, excise taxes have changed in terms of their purpose, their structure, their scope, from how they were originally levied to what we have today. Excise tax adoption ranges from a single issue in a single jurisdiction to taxes that are implemented globally. And tax design and structure varies widely. Uh, if, if you'll give me some, uh, some room here, let me start with one example. Let's talk about cannabis for a moment. The UN reports that cannabis is the most used illicit drug in the world. They estimate that about 4% of the worldwide population aged 25 to 64 used cannabis last year. Now, in many parts of the world, this is illegal illicit, so there's not much to talk about on the tax front. But recently, most notably from changes in North America, we've seen uh, legalization or decriminalization and tax policy that has been implemented to tax cannabis. Now, the unusual situation surrounding the legality of cannabis has led to what I think is one of the oddest, but most unique, most interesting to study tax designs for any product in the world. Within just the United States, certain states apply a specific tax based on quantity. Others apply ad valorem tax based on price or value. Some states apply a hybrid tax that uses both. Within the ad valorem tax rates, sometimes those are levied at the wholesale level, sometimes at the resale or at the retail level to consumers. The tax rates range from 3% to 37%. The specific taxes are levied on separate parts of cannabis, including cannabis seeds, flowers, mature and immature, leaves, trim, clones, whole plants, concentrates, and edibles. And each of those rates can vary by the THC content in the product. This is interesting. Almost certainly suboptimal. This is not the way that we would design a tax structure up front. But what this does is it gives us an opportunity to study how these taxes work. We can analyze the strengths and weaknesses of various tax designs. And again, that will help us learn and we can help influence better policy creation in the future. Studying a bunch of different kinds of excise taxes in this paper. We've put together six broad principles for excise tax design. I will tell you what those six principles are, and then uh, I would like to then tell you about some of the latest trends that we've seen in excise taxes around the globe. So our baseline principles, all right, so our broad principles for tax design uh, within excise taxes are that one, Excise taxes should target a negative externality or social cost associated with a product. This means that the tax base should be targeted directly to the harmful product or uh, the best available proxy for that cost. 
less harmful or less costly substitutes should be excluded from the tax base. Two, specific taxes are superior to ad valorem taxes in most cases because the quantity of consumption of a product is better associated with the negative externality or the user fee for that product than is the product price. Excise taxes are regressive. That doesn't mean that they shouldn't be used at all, but they should be used in a targeted manner and not to raise broad general revenue. Excise taxes should take harm reduction into account in order to maximize well-being and welfare of not only the people being taxed, but also the broad citizenry. Revenues from excise taxes should be aligned as user fees or paired with programs designed to minimize social costs associated with the tax products. Now, improper alignment of social costs and tax revenue can create a problem. Well-designed excise taxes encourage less use. Fewer people smoke over time, for example. That creates a shrinking tax base and declining revenues. That's what the tax policy is supposed to do. Those revenues should not be paired with expenditure programs that need more revenue over time. Th those are our six general broad principles. I'd like to talk about the some of the specific findings looking at, again, specific uh, taxes, and of course, more detail is available in uh, the paper that you have. For traditional excise taxes, including tobacco, alcohol, and motor fuels, the tax base is shrinking. And I already mentioned it's well known that particularly in developed countries, smoking rates have plummeted. For vehicles, electric vehicles have a growing market share, which means there are fewer and fewer users paying motor fuel fees. Now, this has prompted a call for some change to these taxes. Again, if the revenues, for example, in uh, from a shrinking tobacco base are paired with social costs and expenditures, uh, de declining uh, consumption should match up well with declining need for expenditures. For motor fuels, we've seen uh, a, ch a potential change in tax policy be implemented that uh, moves away from the use of motor fuels to fund roads to something more of a vehicle-based fee, or even uh, the future of vehicle mile travels taxes uh, in which cars are charged based on how much they move with some kind of tracking device in the vehicle. Other excise taxes, the newer excise taxes of the group, have the potential to completely change the landscape of excise taxation. Growth in excise taxes on cannabis, alternative tobacco products, sugar-sweetened beverages, ride-sharing, and plastics have the potential for global implementation and major implications for global consumption. Carbon taxes have the potential to exceed annual revenue tax collections from all other forms of excise taxes combined. Okay, so. There are a lot of developments, a lot of things happening that have been fascinating to follow in the space. Uh, carbon taxes, specifically carbon tax border adjustments in the EU, present strong incentives for policy change and potential adoption outside of Europe. I know we're gonna hear more about that uh, later on from our panel. Cannabis tax design should be simple, not what we currently see across all of the US states. A uh, weight-based tax for plant products combined with a THC-based tax for distilled or edible products would create an effective and a targeted tax base. And a low rate is essential for cannabis and any other product that is transitioning from illicit consumption to legal consumption in order to move consumers from illegal markets to legal markets. Alternative tobacco products have the ability to end the cigarette pandemic. <clears throat> Endemic, I try to not use that word pandemic anymore. <clears throat> Alternative tobacco products can be consumed with far less harm than combustible cigarettes. Simple debt tax design for several of these new products include per milliliter taxes on vaping products per milligram taxes on snus, nicotine pouches, and heated tobacco products. 
There are a lot of new products being developed in this category that, again, have the potential to move almost to, to move the majority of smokers away from smoking combustible cigarettes to some form of uh, alternative nicotine consumption. And lastly, plastic taxes are introduced as a means to promote a more circular economy. If plastic taxes, taxes are levied, they should be levied as far upstream in the production process as possible. And plastic tax revenues can be used to incentivize more effective and efficient recycling systems. The key takeaway from our research on excise taxes is that with proper design and implementation, excise taxes can improve overall well being and fund public programs to improve market outcomes. Poor implementation of excise tax policy, however, can create an environment in which people are worse off than if, if no policy had been implemented in the first place. Thank you for your time. I'll be around for the entirety of the conference. If anyone wants to chat with me later, I'm happy to. Hopefully I've encouraged you to uh, at least flip through the paper. I appreciate your time and I'm happy to hand the stage back to Tax Foundation CEO and President Daniel Bunn.